University of North Carolina Chapel Hill head coach Sylvia Hatchell and Paris Key. Coach Hatchell, talk to us a little bit about what you've seen so far in the early part of practice. Well, I love what I've seen uh, because we uh, got a lot of players out there that uh, no one has seen either ever or in the last few years. So, uh, but we've got Stephanie Watts back, um, was uh, Rookie of the Year a couple years ago, Destiny Walker's back, both of those were McDonald's All-Americans and they hadn't played the last year and a half. Uh, and then Shayla Bennett is uh, National Junior College Player of the Year. Uh, so, and of course, we got Paris back, first team All-ACC, Janelle Bailey, who was Rookie of the Year and USA Basketball Player of the Year. So, you know, we've got some uh, pretty good bodies out there and pretty good people. And we just now got to blend it all together. Well, when you talk about blending, you've traditionally wanted to have that up-tempo mm -hmm. pace. How have you put this team together? How is that working to put all these great pieces and make it a whole? And, and you said the key thing there. We haven't been able to be the up-tempo team the past couple years because of numbers, the way that I like to play and the way I feel like sells these kids for the next level. And uh, so... Uh, but we're we really uh, up and down the floor, you know, trying to put a lot of different looks out there defensively, but more the, so than any pl anything playing a very up tempo game. Paris, I have to say this is probably the most you sat next to Coach Hatchell in a while. I mean, you're playing a, you played a lot of minutes a year ago. How excited are you to get all these healthy bodies back on the court with you? Oh, I'm very excited. Um, Coach always says I take plays off on defense. Um, <laughs> I won't have to do that this year. <laughs> Um, I think that we have uh, enough depth on the bench this year that will definitely help me out. So, yeah. so I know that Coach Hatchel won't want to speak to this, but a year ago, a huge milestone in her career, 1,000 win. I'm going to ask you, Paris, to talk about the environment after that game and what it was like to be a part of that historic win for your coach. Well, Carolina has this family feel about it, this family, um, and that's a lot of that Coach Hatchel brings. Um, and I know I was talking to a lot of the fans, and they heard that Coach Hatcher was going for her 1,000th win, and they drove down to see the game. Um, I think that's really what it's about, um, that family environment that she has really brought to the game of basketball over the years. Um, but the environment was absolutely amazing. Uh, people from everywhere were around, family, friends, friends who are family. Um, and just getting the win and seeing the smile on her face, uh, that was a big milestone for her. So you're seven wins shy of the ACC record mm. for wins. I'm sure I knew that. <laughs> you are. No, no, no pressure there. But I think it speaks to one year longevity. But I think a lot of times when we think of ACC women's basketball, you are now the matriarch of this league. Talk about the growth that you've seen within this league. You had two teams in the Final Four a year ago. Talk about it. Oh, it's a great league, no doubt about it. I remember when I was the rookie in the league, the first conference meeting I missed because I, my address was different. I didn't get the information. <laughs> Kay Al called me up and said, where are you? You know, And I said, well, I'm at home. She said, well, we're having a meeting. You need to be here. So uh, that's been a long time ago. But uh, uh, yeah, we got a great league. And uh, you know, it's exciting to be a part of this. You know, we've been, our, our team, we've been through a lot um, you know, the last few years. But we're on the other side now. Uh, you know, we're, 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 we'll be back. And I, I'm really excited about um, the league, where we are, but how competitive it is. Oh, my lands, you know. I mean, if, you're, if you finish top four or five in the ACC, then you're good enough to be in the final four. And that says a lot for our league. One of the most prolific scorers in the league sitting next to you, how do you see her role this year with all the pieces coming back? Do you expect it to be more of the same, or will her role change a little bit? Well, it'll be a lot the same, but she is our only senior, too. Uh, but, um, and she's preseason, you know, a first round draft pick for WNBA. So, you know, I want to help her with her future, but also uh, how she can lead our team. That's the biggest thing is the leadership that she gives because uh, Paris is versatile. She can play uh, about any position on the floor, really. And, and there may be times when we want her to do that. And she loves that. She accepts that responsibility. And she knows that the more versatile she is, the, the more uh, you know, marketable she is for the next level. And so you know, that's why she's such a great kid. And it's so much fun to coach her is because she's just like, whatever, whatever you want me to do, coach. Paris, great score. What is the go-to? I mean, like if you had, if you, if your team needs points, what do you, what do you have, asking Coach Hatch will set up for you? 
something in the mid-range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think I rely on my mid-range a lot. Uh, my three ball has come a long way. Um, and I mean, I'm not the biggest player. I'm pretty athletic. Um, so, you know, driving in is I'm not afraid of it, but the mid-range is kind of my sweet spot. Using a screen or just creating? Either or. Um, I'm fine with creating. Um, kind of see where everybody is and coming off the screen, people wanting to move. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we talked about the tempo that you want to get back to. What about from a defensive perspective? More of the same? Should we expect no, no, something no. different? We're, we're going to go after people more. You know, we'll throw a lot of different things out there, a lot more trapping. Uh, you know, just things to make the offense uncomfortable, take people out of their comfort zones, uh, and make them play up and down the floor. Does that excite you? It does. Um, yeah, it excites me a lot. Um, we're pressuring the ball this year. Coach says we're going back to the way things are supposed to be. Um, Carolina basketball, so fast-paced game, that's what she likes. You mentioned earlier this North Carolina family. The mm -hmm. alums, a lot of alums in the WNBA right now. Mm -hmm. Talk about like the pride you feel when you see your former players out there competing. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because you know, with just the WNBA situation and playoffs and all, you know, we were the second school, number two, uh, with players in the playoffs. I mean, really, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think mean, UConn was right ahead of us, and we were right next to UConn as far as players. Uh, playing in the playoffs in the WNBA. I think that says that our style of play gets them ready for the next level. And that's one of my priorities is that, uh, that I, I mean, you know, we're just not going to walk it up the floor and play slow basketball and run call plays all the time. I want to get them ready to play on the next level. I want to play a style where people can see their skills and abilities and where they have fun playing. They love the game of basketball. And I think that's the way the game should be played. So. When you were recruiting Paris, mm -hmm. did you know then she had that potential, or is it once you get them in practice and you see them there, all right, look, I really need to help her do this to get to that well, next level? Paris was very athletic and very good player, but also Paris has improved her skills tremendously since she came to North Carolina, especially her shooting. But she has worked very, very hard, and not only is she very athletic, but she's a very skilled player. So Paris, of all the alums in the league, who's your favorite? Uh, that's hard. We we play with them sometimes. <laughs> uh, um, I would have to say Jessica Breland. Okay. Just because I've had to play the four position when I first got here, um, so I feel like I've had to kind of read her game a lot, um, and see like where I fell in in Carolina. So. So, Coach Alter, I'm going to ask, this is a rare breed, but you're going to have a two-sport athlete mm -hmm. this year. Can you talk about Claudia a little bit, Claudia Dickey? Yeah, I'll tell you, we don't have enough time to talk about Claudia. <laughs> because, I mean, this kid's going to be good. You know, I mean, you know, she was the youngest player ever in the history uh, to play on the USA soccer team. Uh, and she was a goalie. She anticipates, like, unbelievable. I mean, you know, you look at her, you think, mm, okay, you know, but she gets on that court, starts playing, you go, wow. You know, because she can pass, she sees things, she anticipates. I mean, Claudia is a really good player. You know, I've already got the uh, national championship date of soccer <laughs> on my calendar, so I know we're going to get her the next day after that. So I hope they win a national championship again, but I'll be, be happy to get Claudia because she, she's, she's a player. I, I want to kind of address, you're kind of sharing facilities right now mm -hmm. with another school. Can you just... Tell the yeah. viewers about that. Uh, well, right after the uh, hurricane hit that night, my phone rang and I looked at my phone and it said Karen Barefoot, you know, and I answered the phone. She said, Coach, she says, I need some help. I said, What's wrong, Karen? She said, A hurricane has hit, you know, trees are everywhere. Our campus is a disaster. From UNC you know, Wilmington? Yes, from UNC Wilmington. And uh, she said, We need a place to practice. So she said, we want to bring them to a, an area where we can put them in hotels and, and where we can practice. So she said, I'd love to bring them to the Triangle area. And she said, but can you help me? I said, well, you know, what time can you practice? She said, well, any time. I said, you practice while we're in class. So that's what they've been doing the last couple of weeks is practicing in our facility. And they practice in the mornings from 10 to 12 while our kids are in class. And it's worked out really well. And I was just glad to help them, you know, because, I mean, you know, they're, they're in a very difficult situation. I mean, Paris, you're a North Carolina native. I mean, what does it mean to you 
to have that team there and know that you're, you're helping them? Um, well, I think that uh, North Carolina was hit and like different parts was affected differently and just being able to be there for those that got affected on the coast um, really means a lot and this goes back to that family feel. Um, Coach Hatchell sees things outside of basketball, things that are way beyond our understanding um, and she likes helping people just outside of the UNC community. Um, yeah. All right, Paris. Your, your score, but who's that one defender that just kind of gets under your skin in the <laughs> ACC? In the ACC? <laughs> Probably a team. Could I, I think <laughs> Go ahead. Wow, that's, that's tough. I can't really, can't really think of one off the top of my head. Um, uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Coach Hatchell, what was the aha moment for you when you were like, Paris is special. Like, we, we got a good one. This kid's going to be better than maybe she thought she could be. Well, um, you know, I don't know if it was just all of a sudden, but I know when her, the first year she played, we played Notre Dame. And she put on a show. I mean, really. And when the game was over with, you know, Muffet spoke to me and she said, we had no answer for her. Paris Key was just, and, and, and her mid-range game, it, I mean, she can shoot threes, and she shot over 40% from the three, but, you know, I mean, she's so good with the basketball, uh, you know, in the mid-range area, because she's either going to score or get fouled, and that percentage is just off the charts, you know, but, but she, she's a really good three-point shooter as well, uh, but uh, she's had several games, and, and whenever, you know, and then when we played, uh, I think it was Duke last year, and we were down by like 19 points, and we came back and won the game. And, you know, Paris, you know, makes a big shot, you know, at the end uh, uh, to go into overtime. And uh, so, I mean, she's a, she's a clutch player. Paris, <laughs> what's your coach's favorite saying? <laughs> Whoa, that was, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I got a lot of them. That's um, why it's a lot of wisdom she's dropping, Paris. That's what you got to remember. Um, sometimes they look at me like I got four heads, too, whenever I say things to them. But later on, I explain it, and they understand. <laughs> um, I'm not sure it's like round up the wagons. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's a lot of them. Uh, run. That's a big mm. one. <laughs> um, corral. Uh, that's just, just one word here and there, but we start every day with a, a thought of the day or a quote of the oh, day, yeah. and so I give them a lot of things to, to think about. What's your best impersonation of Coach Hatchell? <laughs> uh, I guess when, when she's like, gets kind of upset, um, things just aren't going our way, but she wants to kind of motivate us at the same time, but, you know, kind of let us light a fire up under us. And she's like, let's go, come on, like something like that. Um, yeah, and she wants to bring it out of us and give us everything that she has so that we can give her everything that we have. What's your coach's go-to dance move? Uh, well, she loves the shag. Mm -hmm. so, I do like the shag. Yeah, so I mean something, a little, a little rock here and there is kind of, kind of a go-to, really. I tell them that they, they don't have good music. <laughs> you know, now I got good music, you know, I got the music right there, you know, so, but, but anyway, they, they, I tell them, I said, that, y'all don't know what good music is. <laughs> All right, Paris. Mm -hmm. How well do you know your coach? You're down two. Oh, gosh. Three seconds ago, uh -huh. you've advanced the ball. Uh huh. Is she going for the win? Is she going for the tie? Oh, she's going for the win. Mm -hmm. Without well, hesitation. <laughs> I mean, why do you yeah. think Jamie Cherry has uh, had a whole right. bunch of buzzer beaters? Mm, yeah. Mm. Coach Ashton wants to win. <laughs> well, that's how we won the national championship. So, I'm going for the win. Going for, no, there's no tie. I'm going for the win. <laughs> I actually told the President of the United States that one time. <laughs> but anyway. <yeah. laughs> Who? Let's hear it. I'm serious. I, after we won the national championship, we went to the White House. Bill Clinton was the president. And I told him, I said, you know, President Clinton, as you lead our country and you get in difficult situations and all, I said, just remember, you know, what I did. When you get in a tough situation, remember, you go for the win and not the tie. So I told him that. And then we, I walked out the door at the White House. <laughs> well, I'm sure former President Clinton, as well as all of Tar Heel Nation, are wishing you guys the best of luck this year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm not sure he took my advice.